<laughs> good morning, folks. I'm in a good mood today. I'm in a good mood. I'm the most righteous Reverend Dr. Bishop Pastor Clib-Lib. And I'm drinking Pepsi-Cola. And my goal is maybe to see if we can de dehydrate the whole developing nations. It's funny when they talk about third world nations. I wonder what first and second world nations means. All I know is that a whole lot of kids are drinking this rather than water. It takes two drinks of water for every one drink of this to make it plausible. But today's message on this very special day is 10 ways to lose membership from a mega church. Now, I guess we'll go to explaining later on why you'd want to lose members from a mega church to begin with, but this is 10 ways. You know that David Letterman, he cracked me up. He recently announced he's retiring and he is going to leave. He's going to leave. I've been watching him for 30 years all the way back to the morning show, but I'm going nowhere. The number one way to tell a bloated membership is that bloatedness itself is gluttony. According to scripture, it is a sin of the flesh. So, if you have a head pastor who's 75, 50, 100 pounds overweight, he has a similar problem as those who fornicate and those who do other deadly sins. It's just a matter of perception. And sometimes I can't perceive my toes, if you know what I mean, when I'm looking down. Now that's not a good thing, and I'll work on that. Another way to lose members in a mega church is starting to put single folks in more important roles. Roles of being elders and roles of being decones and roles of being pastors and roles of being on the board of directors. I say that that is a good way to stop a mega church. Now we have to bear with me. <laughs> bear with me. I see that's the double. I like to switch them. Bear with me. Bear with me here now. We usually like to keep single folk, even though they make up almost half of congregations anywhere in the United States, according to Barna. He's another fellow that you don't have to worry about. According to Barna Research. So, what you do is you take all the infantile new Christians who happens to be rich in their business lives, their work lives, their inheritance lives, their prestige lives, their power lives, their neighborhood lives, and yes, indeed, the prestige in a church that wealth automatically believes. You are bound to rich a piss. <laughs> See what I did? You are down to piss a rich person off by telling them it's going to take about 10 years of discipleship to even come close to a leadership position. In fact, there's a janitor, he's down there in the first row, who's been a faithful man of God for 45 years, and he is our chief elder. He is single, and he has club foot. But don't think you can use that club foot as an advantage for your soccer team. <laughs> okay, we roll on. We roll on to reducing megachurch numbers so you have more concentration on discipleship than you do on conversion. Now that's the number one reason you'd ever want to reduce a megachurch or abstain from a megachurch is so that you have more focus on discipleship rather than on conversions. And Billy Graham had a weakness on this one, and he confessed it quite firmly, that although he did many, many conversions, that if he had it to do over again, he would do it differently. Now this one is really tricky because you use the New Testament here. 
And that's to say the kin folks that have disease, mental illness, and spiritual persecution is not normative in the New Testament. And you sure as heck want to stay away from the disciples and how they died and the disciples and how they was persecuted. Because you're never going to empty out a church faster than if you tell somebody they're going to be persecuted. That disease and mental illness are normative in the human condition since the fall of Adam and Eve. Here we go with another one. How else can we reduce the megachurch populations? Well, as Joyce Mears tells the folks, <laughs> see how that Joyce Mears, it's like a mirror. Joyce is like a mirror to something. And that's what I'm searching for. What does Joyce Myers mirror? Well, what she doesn't mirror is a long line in the airport because she's got two pilots full-time on duty and her husband drives a hundred thousand dollar car that's a lot to streamline into a jet but i don't think he actually drives the car into the jet because you'd have to have a bigger jet it's big but they have to have a bigger jet than that okay closing in how to lose membership of course, this usually involves part of the New Testament. And you know where it talks about gaining favor in Proverbs? This one happens to talk about the Old Testament. Gaining Proverbs with favor with God. A man have done it not many times. A few will try to do it, but many will fail. I'd say Bono from you two. Billy Graham and Pope Francis have found favor with man and favor with God. That's from Proverbs 3. And then, of course, it talks about Jesus growing strong as a carpenter from age 12 until his ministry at age 30, where he found favor with man and favor with God. Another way to lose members in a megachurch is simply quote the New Testament again and again. This is just brilliant. I wish somebody thought about it before me. Harder than a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person go through the eye of the kingdom of God. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. The dynamite, I'm not thinking about that tall African-American man with the comedy, but the dynamite, the story is of the widow's might and how giving, we're not to let our left hands know what our right hand is doing. But if you got a lard-ass pastor, you may know what he's doing with both hands at the same time. All right. Finally, <laughs> brother sleeping up there just woke up and smiled. The final and most effective way we can wait a minute. I think I got one. I think I got one of the carts before the horse. <laughs> the final and most effective way we can get down on the megachurch population is to research and research and research some more. And there's a very famous church in Chicago. They used to be famous years ago during the rum running years, but this has been famous for something else. Dawson Creek Church, mega church, says that after they've studied on and on and on about programs, they found that the congregants were no closer to Jesus than they were from the very beginning. In other words, they're going to have to do another study about the study that they just studied to find out how the congregants can be more popular than they were if they were actually being discipled by Jesus. Thank you, and good night. Pretty fucking pathetic.